water, earth, fire, air. A hundred years passed and my brother and I discovered the new avatar, an airbender named Aang. And although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he can save any- No! I was so close! Before he's ready to save anyone. My favorite crew. Oh, they've adopted this bird horse. This is humiliating. These people should be giving us whatever we want. Such denial. How about some entertainment in exchange for a gold piece? It's a long, long way to Ba Sing Se. But the girls in the city, they look so pretty. I got criticized on one video because I said Uncle Arrow wasn't a good singer. That was a lot better. Although, I feel like the time he sang where he was singing a little bit off key was more endearing. It had a lot of soul. No. I don't like this. Kill him, Zuko. I know I'm not allowed to speak poorly of Uncle Iroh, so I won't. I think the swamp is calling to me. Do you want me to ignore it? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Since everyone feels so strongly about this, bye swamp. That is a very literal interpretation of what happens when you don't follow your instincts. It's cool that he can create like a force field. You've got an elbow leech. Why do things keep attaching to me? That's two out of three episodes where Sokka has gotten some kind of leech parasite thing. The Adventures of Alpha and Momo. Look, there's nothing supernatural going on here. Uh. <laughs> what is that? That was the most terrifying animal. That's an alligator. <laughs> It would have been funny if you just spit it right in half. The adventures of Appa and Momo continue. Can you help me? Mom? Mom! What the heck? Oh, it's like I an illusion believe. type thing. But what's the swamp's goal? So about the illusion thing, it's something that appears a lot in media, especially in fantasy. The first thing that comes to my mind is the mirror in Harry Potter, where you see exactly what you want to see. A lot of times these things are presented as dangerous for the characters, and this is for good reason, because often these are symbols of trauma that the character can't get over, and they risk getting lost in them and not being able to move past them. Hello? Is it Yue? It is. Oh no. Yue? This is just a trick of the light. I hit my head running away last night. It's very in character for Sokka to go to the rational explanation right away. I wonder what's behind this whole thing. At first I thought it was going to be like a master or something or a teacher calling to, out to them. But the more I watch this episode, the more it becomes hard to ignore the idea that there's something malevolent behind the swamp. Who are you? <laughs> oh. Who could it be? Betty tastes a lot like possum chicken. You think everything tastes like possum chicken? Regional American stereotypes. Oh, are there water butters? Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? And what do you want? We were all just scared and hungry and our minds were playing tricks on us. You saw something too? I thought I saw you in. I think about her all the time. And you saw mom, someone you miss a lot. What about me? I didn't know the girl I saw. Yeah, I was gonna mention that. I thought that's interesting. Aang didn't get a vision of something he liked. It's the Deku tree. The swamp. There's nothing magical happening here. Wow, that's beautiful. I love this creature, it's so cool. That was crazy. Wow. This waterbending stuff is insane. What the heck? It just gets crazier and crazier. It's not gonna work though. It's a plant. It can grow. Oh, there's a there's dude in there. in there. He's bending the vines. Vine bending. I love that creature design. One, it just looks so cool. Secondly, I like the mask because this is all about illusion so far. I'm like really lost about what the end goal is here though. Why did you call me here if you just wanted to kill us? I didn't call you here. I reached enlightenment right here under the Banyan Grove tree. See, this whole swamp is actually just one tree, one big living organism, just like the entire world. We are all branches of the same tree. Time is an illusion, and so is death. Oh my god. Here we are again. I'm sure people who were here for the Midnight Gospel series are laughing right now that this is coming up again. I kind of want to hear him out before I say anything, for once. Time is an illusion. It's someone I will meet. Everything is connected. 
kind of witchcraft is this? You guys are waterbenders. Yeah, it's interesting that there are just waterbenders out in the world outside of the tribes. I try it. The only thing I can't figure out is how you made the tornado that sucked us down. I can't do, do anything like that. Yeah, there's definitely something else going on here. Something is trying to bring all these elements together, but I don't know why. This bird. <laughs> oh, revenge time. Who's there? You messed up, dude. Nice, he made a comeback. That whole episode was one big can of worms. I think the idea of enlightenment is a very interesting one, and I like thinking about the idea that we're all connected. But I think that for me, it depends on what is the goal behind that and what conclusions do you then draw from that? I think it's undeniable that if you look way, way back, you're gonna find ways in which we are all connected and we are all the same. But rather than that being something insightful and meaningful, I find that that's just more a refocusing of the lens rather than finding something of value from which we can act. Perhaps there are lessons there that are applicable to life that are useful, like respecting other people, respecting nature, or not thinking that the universe revolves around you. But I think it can also be used as a way to avoid having to answer difficult questions about humanity and how to live as a good person. The one way I see people using this, we are all one thing and everything is connected and we're all just lights on a node to take it from Midnight Gospel. It's used as kind of a pushback against having to figure these things out and how to take responsibility for your existence and your choices because one of the conclusions of everything is light or everything is connected in some way. Way, is that nothing we do really matters because we're not our bodies, we're not really physical beings who live in the earth, we're just energy. Good ideas and truth are corruptible. They're often reduced into token sayings that lose the original essence. There are so many traps on the path to wisdom. I'm very, very reluctant to accept bite-sized sayings of universal value and meaning and truth. It's just too convenient, it's too easy. I know there are people who really embody these concepts in a real and beautiful way, but that's not often how how we receive it. We receive it packaged in this fake envelope, and I have a very strong reaction whenever I see it. I don't like fake enlightenment. This time I really did it. I really went way beyond the scope of the show. But that's my reaction. But back to Avatar, it was a really intriguing episode. I'm not really sure what to make of it. Um, we're gonna watch another one. Avatar Day. I mean, we just saw him eat bugs, so it's whatever. <laughs> Why does it always happen to Sokka? Sewer sludge, leeches, bugs in the mouth, getting stuck with the vagrants, having his girlfriend become the moon. You're completely surrounded! My scrolls! My staff! My boomerang! Oh no! There's no time! Oh, I see. So there's time to get your scrolls and time to get your yeah. staff, but no time for my boomerang! Come on. And it's doubly bad because he's not a bender, so that's like his only weapon. He saved Katara with it two episodes ago. Hey, look! That's the biggest knee I've ever seen. I didn't know that... People knew about him. Word has spread by now. now Oops. Now Imagine that? Imagine seeing a hundred foot version of yourself being burned. What does it matter where they came from? Come on, Ira, you gotta put your foot down one of these days. Mm. You're not welcome here, Avatar. It was Avatar Kiyoshi. She murdered our glorious leader, Chin the Great. The only way to prove your innocence is to stand trial. You're supposed to be out saving the world. You can't do that locked up in here. I can't do that with people thinking I'm a murderer either. So I don't know where this is going, but I gotta say this seems like a mistake to me. One, if people really have it out for you, if they really don't like you, nothing you do is gonna change that. Secondly, if people are really that dedicated to disliking you before they know you, you, then it's not really about you anyway. It's because they find some utility in, in hating you. Maybe it's that they're jealous of your accomplishments and so they hate you to make themselves feel better about them not accomplishing anything. Or it could be that you belong to a certain group and it's the opposite of a group they identify with. And in order to maintain the group identity that they feel gives them strength, they target you as an enemy for being outside of that group because you're threatening to their, their identity. And the only way that you could change that would be to compromise your values and what you believe for them. But as I mentioned before, I really think that it's not about being on the same side as people that should matter. It's about their inner qualities and their values. And if someone is going to hate you so easily just to protect their own fragile existence, they're probably not somebody you want on your side anyway. I think the only way you can proceed healthily is to constantly reflect on your values and then live according to those values. If you can end every day looking in the mirror, and liking what you see, then nobody can threaten you. Nothing can take anything away from you. And the interesting thing about that is if you do live that way, the people who really matter, people who actually want 
good things for the world and aren't ruled by bitterness and jealousy, those are the people who are going to be most attracted to you because they're going to see that and they're going to see strength and they're going to see someone they can trust. It's really easy to chase people and want them to like you still because you maybe identify with their friendship or you want to be thought of as someone likable, but you are who you are. That doesn't mean that you should be rigid in your values. I think it takes constant exploration, but I don't think you should knowingly compromise your values just to get other people's attention. And I think Katara is right. Aang has other things to do here. For some reason, I thought you were an expert detective. I feel like you would be good at that. I figured out it was old man Jarko wearing polar leopard boots. See, a real 800 pound polar leopard would have left much deeper tracks. Oh no, they're turning on him. This is the footprint of the killer Kiyoshi. This temple and this statue were cut from the same stone. So if they were built at the same time, that means- Shh, I wanna solve it. Kiyoshi never set foot in this temple. That was some great sleuthing. <laughs> You're going to fit in real well around here. I'm gonna take a guess here. A common trope with prisoners is they start out tough and they end up being sweethearts. Oh, it's this guy again. It's the foaming of the mouth guy or girl. I appreciate it more the second time. The first time I didn't get it. They put a lot of time into the sequence. <laughs> Yes, that was nice. Where's Angie? He couldn't be here, Coco. <laughs> yeah, get, yeah, wipe that off. How embarrassing. What's Suki up to? She and the other warriors left to fight in the war. Oh, well, that's great. This girl you're talking about, she'll come around. Yes, I knew it. <laughs> He's super cool. You're a catch. Handsome, funny, not to mention you're the avatar. Don't be afraid to tell her how you feel. <laughs> Aw, it works though. I think we're wired to want to see goodness in people because it's so nice if that actually works out that way. We want to believe we can connect with anyone. And and while we can't, you will definitely find it in surprising places, which is always a beautiful thing. It fills your heart when you see tough people who are caring. That being said, I feel like they give Ang terrible advice. This is a thing that happens a lot with friends. People care about you because they're your friends. They see your, your virtues. And so they tell you that any any girl, any guy or whatever would be crazy not to desire you. I think the implication is that if you're good, someone must like you. And if someone doesn't like you, it's because you're not good. Well, that's just not the case. People are looking for different things at different times in their lives. And I think the best advice is just to stay open and roll with it. Not necessarily to be aloof, like Sokka would say, but to just relax and keep your options open and not stress any one particular love interest too much until it becomes more serious. Because the only thing you're going to do by clamping down on one person to the exclusion of all else is to drive them away and to dampen your positive qualities. But they're well-meaning. They say that because they like Aang. So the sun must have been in the west. So what? <laughs> if Kiyoshi was in the ceremony at sunset. <laughs> when you're super attached to your identity. Evidence? <laughs> That's not how our court system works. I say what happened, and then you say what happened, and then I decide who's right. Exactly. They already have come to the conclusion because it's not really about you. They're using you as a tool for their own fragile belief system to keep it all propped up so it doesn't come crashing down. The truth is a threat. That's why we call it justice. Because it's just us. <laughs> I love this, like self-contained logic system. It's a joke and it's ridiculous, but honestly, it's real. It's such a real thing to start with the conclusion first and basically create a whole world that points towards exactly the thing that you want it to point to. I know we've had some difficult times lately. There is a simple honor in poverty. There's no honor for me without the Avatar. I'm not so sure it would solve our problems. Mm -hmm. And there is no hope at all. No, Zuko. Yes. You must never give in to despair. Allow yourself to slip down that road and you surrender to your lowest instincts. In the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself. That is the meaning of inner strength. Mm. I felt like he was talking to me. <laughs> I feel like that was the culmination of so much buildup, so much conflict, waiting for Iroh to say something, be there for him. I felt that. Something for me to think about. In the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself. That is the meaning of inner strength. In the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself. That is the meaning of inner strength. That I can memorize. 
I love that because it's such an empowering focus. It's not external. It's not that you need someone else to give you something. It's that you are the source of it. You have to get through the darkness. Nobody else can do that for you. And you can come out of it hoping for something better, not being defeated by despair. Zuko's a tough nut to crack though, but sometimes your brain is working on things without even your knowledge. You may be moved by something and resist it, but if the idea is powerful enough and if you're ready enough, once it gets in, it may take some time, but it's going to surface and it's going to become part of you. And I hope that was one of the moments that will get through to him. I want him so badly to be good Zuko. I have a personal stake in him overcoming it. Zuko represents so much that's real. He represents the choice between allowing the darkness to overcome you and being ruled by it or overcoming it and using your gifts productively and to the benefit of others. He walks away, but I feel like there was no ignoring that. Maybe wearing her stuff will trigger something. Oh. I killed Chin the Conqueror. I would not sit passively while he took our home. On that day, we split from the mainland. It's fun to see a fully realized avatar. Oh, she actually split from the mainland. <laughs> I feel like he could have avoided death by like just stepping backwards, but I thought a lot about what you said. Yes. You did? It's helped me realize something. We no longer have anything to gain by traveling together. <gasps> no. I need to find my own way. Wait. <laughs> Uncle Iroh still gives no matter what. That's real inner strength. But you know what though? Zuko's not wrong. It goes back to something that we were talking about before, about how you have to follow your instincts sometimes. Sometimes you need to experience the world for what it really is in order to have perspective on the things that matter. So yes, it's sad, but I want to believe it's for the best. Yes, he's doing it selfishly. Yes, it's because he doesn't want to hear the things Iroh has to say. But that just means it's something that he needs for his development. And Uncle Iroh, having true inner strength, recognizes that, I think. We've come to claim this village for the Fire Lord! See, they're doing the same thing that Kyoshi did to them. Defend their homeland. <laughs> that was good. Oops. Boomerang! Yay! You do always come back! <laughs> That's nice. This is by far the worst town we've ever been to. Even worse than the swamp. <laughs> Wow. Once again, I find myself a lot more drawn to the Zuko arc. I think the Uncle Iroh line was one of my favorite parts of the show so far. I don't know where this is going, but I'm enjoying the ride. I hope to see you next time for episode 6.